What's up guys, Rogue9 here. Operation Steel Wave is barely a week old and we already have the first patch of the season up on the test server. As usual, the patch notes are, let's say a little bit hazy on some of the details, so in this video we will be going over what will actually be changing and how it will affect your games. As a bonus, I'm also going to give a brief rundown of the new metal detector behavior. Let's go! First up, let's maybe get straight to the fixed metal detectors that can be found on several maps in Rainbow Six Siege. This change is already live on PC and consoles, and since I didn't cover it in my last patch update video, I thought it would be a good opportunity to show off the change here. If you already know all about this, use the chapters in the video to jump forward to the next topic. The patch notes tell us that the metal detectors will now play a shorter 3 second alarm before stopping, only one alarm can be played at a time, and that there is no longer a cooldown on the alarm trigger. And while the first bullet point is straightforward enough, I find that the latter two are a bit misleading to say the least, so let me just break down a really simple before and after. Before Steel Wave, the detectors used to play a 10 second alarm sound whenever a player passed through them, and then there was a 35 second cooldown once triggered. This meant that after the alarm was finished, there was still a full 25 seconds that you could walk through the detectors without setting them off. The way they work now is that the alarm sound only lasts for 3 seconds once triggered, and the cooldown is also 3 seconds. This means that you won't have multiple overlapping alarm sounds from the same detector if you walk through it backwards and forwards, which makes complete sense, but as soon as the 3 second sound is finished, the device is immediately rearmed and will go off as soon as you or anyone else walk through. That's it! No more, no less. The suggestion in the second bullet point that only one alarm can go off at a time is completely nonsense. Different alarms throughout the map can be triggered at the same time completely independently. It's just that you can't trigger the same one again and again for overlapping alarm sounds. Now over to the upcoming changes and first up here is a nerf to Melusi. The patch notes tell us that the range of a gadget is being reduced, the max range is coming down from 6 meters to 4 meters, and apparently the slow penalty radius is being reduced from 3 to 2 meters. This kind of suggests that before the 2 meter mark, attackers will not be slowed down, but that is quite simply incorrect. Even after the nerf, attacking players will be unable to sprint and will be slowed down as soon as a banshee goes off at 4 meters distance. What I suspect the patch notes are trying to tell us is that the slowing effect increases the closer you get to the device itself peaking at 2 meters distance, and I do believe that this progressive slowdown can be seen in the test footage in the background here. But minor details aside, the main point is that the Banshee is basically losing one third of its range compared to before. Both the maximum trigger range and the range at which players experience the maximum slowdown effect are reduced by one third. In addition to this, there is also a nerf to the gadget sound effect. In first person POV? What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Rainbow Six is a first person shooter. All sound is always in first person POV. There is no third person POV unless for some bizarre reason the spectator cam still gets full sound. But that that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Imagine a pro league broadcast and the spectator cam is, to, is totally and completely deafened by banshees all of the time. It did no. No. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I just don't know what this first person POV comment is supposed to mean. Again though, the ever enduring mysteries of the Rainbow Six patch notes aside, the main takeaway here is that the Banshee will be quite a bit quieter. Here is a comparison of the before and after. The next nerf is for Ace and Hibana. It was recently discovered that their breaching tools were able to destroy defender gadgets, such as bandit batteries or kaid claws, through a reinforced wall as long as there was a breachable floor for the breaching tools to detonate on. And while Ace's Selma Aqua Breachers were also intended to be used as anti-gadget devices, they were never supposed to be able to defeat Bandit or Kaid supported walls all on their own, and so this ability is being mostly removed. 
The Selma can still destroy close by gadgets, but only when they're on the same side of a reinforced wall, not from the other side. This is a pretty decent fix, and it's great to see it come into the game so soon after the launch of this new operator, but there is still a little bit of a trick you can use, specifically when you're playing as Ace and you come up against a bandit. All you need to do is stand parallel to the wall and make sure that you throw the Selma far enough away from the wall so that it doesn't get zapped, but still close enough so that the unfold holding arms will still reach the wall. When the Selma detonates, this can and will leave a decent sized breach at the bottom of the wall, which will then allow you to shoot the batteries on the other side as well as deny any further tricking. So even after the patch, the ace trick does still work to a degree and you can still defeat a bandited wall all on your own. I think the way this should work is that as soon as any part of the Selma, including the arms, touches an electrified wall, the entire gadget is immediately destroyed, and maybe we will see this fix come into the game at some point. How long it will take to program this new behavior is anyone's guess. All we know for sure is that in the live build right now, you can still use both Ace and Hibana's breaches to clear defender gadgets through walls, and as things stand, even after the nerf or fix in the upcoming patch, Ace will still be able to open up small parts of electrified walls as long as there is a breachable floor on his side of the wall. Apart from these two balancing fixes, there are also a bunch of bug fixes coming to the game, and while most of them are quite mundane, there are a couple that are worth mentioning. If you're active on Twitter, you might have seen a few clips going around taking advantage of a new bug that allows players to walk or crawl on even the tiniest ledges on a number of maps. Here's Procaster and streamer Kickstart pulling off a ridiculous post-plant defense on Top Floor Cafe. It worked! Oh, nice. It worked! Oh, I can't memes. <laughs> I can't fucking believe it! Oh shit! Oh my god, dude! And the clip that originally made this glitch public was this outrageous Assassin's Creed style parkour trick shared by the one and only Coconut Bra. With a new patch on the test server, this trick, glitch or whatever you want to call it, has been removed on all maps. See an example test of the canal ledge here. As fun and inventive as the strats that came with this glitch could be, I think it's great to see the devs react quickly to patch this out, because some of the possibilities on various maps are absolutely broken. Another bug that is getting fixed is that in the live build right now, Malusi's Banshees have a much larger bulletproof hitbox than the actual size of the gadget, and some clever players had already found some sneaky spots where you could use the see-through cover to get sight lines on your opponents while staying 100% untouchable. This is also being fixed in the next patch, and the new hitbox of the Banshees will be much more accurate, and so the opportunity to use this invisible hitbox for cover will soon also be a thing of the past. Nicely done, Ubisoft. And that's it. Short and sweetish for once. Many thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next episode. Yeah. <laughs>